If you have a small business, you're probably wondering where should you be advertising? And it's a great question. There are a bunch of different ad networks that are amazingly powerful for small businesses if you know how to use them. In this video, we're gonna talk about exactly where you should be marketing so that you'll be able to have a clear strategy of where you should be running ads to reach the best customers. We're gonna talk about what kind of a budget you should put together and based on your specific budget, what should your strategy be as well? So by the end of this video, you'll have a clear idea of where you should be running ads. And in additional videos, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to set up those ads for your small business. Let's get into today's video. Hey there, everybody. My name is Brandon Brashears. I create daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, this is a great place for you. You should definitely consider subscribing. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video. And if you have any questions, be sure to comment below. So let's talk about advertising. I think first and foremost, before you run any ads, you need to understand who you are targeting. So who is your target market and where are these people spending time? Now, typically um, every single local business in general, you have a few things that you can be pretty certain of. Number one is Google is still a great resource. People use Google like crazy. Most every business would benefit from having Google as their um, search network and their ad network and things. With that being said, Google ads are a very large uh, product. There's a bunch of things like display ads, search partners, uh, pre-roll video ads. There's just so many placements that you can put ads out. You can play, put ads on apps if you want to. So you have to be very clear specifically inside of Google which products are gonna be beneficial for you. We'll talk about that in a little bit here and you'll be able to understand where you should be running ads. The other thing is that Facebook and Instagram have such a wide user base that ad targeting is amazing. It's really it's typically between Google and Facebook that's going to cover it for your business. People say, should I do Twitter? Should I do LinkedIn? Should I do Pinterest? Other kind of ad networks like that. The, the answer to that might be maybe. It really depends on the demographic that you're targeting and the user base of the ad network. You know, Snapchat is also a great uh, ad network too. And based on the demographic that you're trying to target, it just depends on who it is that you're trying to reach. But you can say with certainty that between Google and Facebook, which is also Instagram's ad platform, those will have the coverage that you need to get out there. So the things that we're gonna be focusing on primarily today is gonna be Google and Facebook. And we'll talk about the differences between those two things. But first, you really have to understand what is the, the demographic that I'm actually targeting? Who are the people that we're trying to reach? And once you have that answered, and you need to get very, very in-depth, you need to understand, well, let's say you're, you're selling loans, for example, you're doing real estate and you wanna get more loans. Well, if you say, oh, well, I want anybody who's buying a house, then that makes it so much more open to, like it could be anywhere, you're gonna have such a bland marketing message, it's not gonna really be created for somebody. So having it crafted down, you know what, I'm gonna be targeting first time home buyers who have a VA loan eligibility, who are military members, right? That's the specificity that you need to really be able to target people to create messaging that is going to really work for that person instead of just being general, anybody who wants a loan. I'm their guy, right? That's that's not the same thing. So having that specificity is going to allow you to stand out because you're gonna be able to create marketing messages that will really resonate with your target audience. So number one, figure out who you're targeting and really, really get clear on that. Once that's done, you need to consider, you know, how are people going to be approaching your brand or your business? We need to consider what it is that we're going to be selling to these people. And it's gonna really help to tailor the way that we run ads. Facebook is a platform where people are spending time hanging out. They're not really there act actively consuming products. They're not actively searching for things like, you know what, um, I really need a plumber right now. I'm gonna go to Facebook, right? They might ask for recommendations, but typically people aren't spending tremendous amounts of time on Facebook or Instagram actively looking for brands or businesses they're gonna go over to a search network like Google and they're gonna type in search plumbers near me and they're gonna start running through ad networks. Um, your Google or Yelp or other places like that. So the strategy that you have built around the ad network is going to be depending upon what the intent of the person is who's using your product or service. Now, a lot of times um, if you're selling physical products or you know, e-commerce products, or you're looking to generate um, interest of certain segments, 
you're going to be able to really target those people and interrupt those people on Facebook or on Instagram, but it really depends on what you're looking for. So I'm going to give you some examples. So let's say you are a veterinarian, okay? And you have a veterinary practice and you're going to put ads out on Facebook that's just running locally to people around you, right? Same thing kind of for restaurants as well. Um, your, your business is going to be something that pretty much everybody in the area can use, right? But they're not necessarily actively looking for them. So the way that you construct an offer on these uh, channels, which are kind of just discovery based versus somebody that's actively searching for something, you're going to be, you know, approaching these two different groups of people very differently. Now with platforms like Facebook and Instagram, you want to give the clients and customers and the potential clients and customers a reason to come in right? They're not actively on Facebook because they want a cool restaurant to come and try or because they want to bring their dog in for veterinary services. And so you have to give them that reason to take the first step. Now, I know that a lot of small businesses don't like, you know, resorting to discounting as a primary method of getting people in the door. And so I'm going to give you a little tip here that helps you to kind of overcome that because discounting does work and giving people special offers and promotional offers, it helps to get them in the door. So typically if I'm working with a client who's a local business and they don't want to focus heavily on discounting, they kind of want to be a premium service in the area, which is a lot of them. Um, they say, you know, what can I do? I don't want to get people who are just coming in that are basically getting services for free and then they're going to leave and never be a customer again. And the way that we frame that is we take it and we say, Hey, let us earn your business for life. We'll turn you into a customer for life. Give us one shot and you'll see what makes us different. So that is a great way to frame some kind of a promotional offer and you specifically name it, hey, new client special or first time customer special. And you make it something so that you'll get them in the door to give you a shot. But you have to remember, you have to make a reason for people to want to come in. If you're on Instagram, you're not looking for stuff to do typically that's like, I really, really want to go try out that new sandwich place or, you know, I want to they're just not there hanging out. They're looking at what their friends and family are doing. They're searching and, and following specific brands that they already have relationships with. So you have to interrupt that pattern somehow and give them a reason to come in. And that's, you know, specifically with Facebook and Instagram. Now, if you have uh, search traffic on Google, though, you're going to be a lot better off if you're trying to target transactional searches. So within Google, you have you know, the different ad placements, I think for most local businesses, you're going to want to focus primarily on search. And again, it completely depends on your business. But for the most part, most local businesses would be benefited by search. And so when you're setting up your AdWords, you want to make sure that you're only targeting search networks. Don't target partner networks. That's a default setting that makes it so that you'll show up in different people's websites and all over the place. So you're act you only want to target people that are actively looking for your product or service or something related to your business. Now, with that, you want to make sure to be targeting the right search intent and the right level of intent for the funnel that, that your product or service solves. So for example, if you are a plumber and you have people that are searching on Google for plumbers near me, that's a great search term because people are looking for a plumber. They're looking for a solution to the problem that they have. And so if you are the solution and you have availability and you know that, you know, I'm reasonably priced, there's a good chance that you will get that person to come in and let you be their plumber, which is great. So that is a good example. But if somebody is searching for, um, let's say, you know, what are the causes of drain backups, the most common drain backups, or, or for example, how long do pipes last? before I need a repipe, right? Those kind of questions, that's just starting the process of searching. And so it's not to say that that wouldn't work well, but you have awareness, evaluation, and typically conversion. And so if you have somebody who knows that they have a problem, they're actively looking for a solution, a lot of times you can just bypass a lot of the, the funnel steps, right? Where you don't necessarily have to provide content and give education and follow up and follow up. Somebody needs a, a, a a solution and you are the solution. So you connect on ads and you guys both are happy. They got the service and you got the customer. So think about though the intent of your product and service and what the people that are buying your products and service, what they actually are looking for. 
and that's going to help you to understand where you should be advertising. I think it's incredibly important though when you are doing uh, ads on both Google and Facebook and Instagram that you consider really how the users are using that specific platform. And it's important to really, really get into the mindset of what is the average person who's using this? What are they doing? How are they spending time? What are the kinds of posts and the kinds of engagement that are happening? And how do people use this product? And I think that that's very, very important. Now, if you're doing Facebook or Instagram, a lot of times people will tag their friends, especially if it's a good deal. Um, and if they feel like they're being useful, that's a great way to get exposure, right? So people will tag their friends and you know, say, hey, do we need this? Or, hey, I, I thought of you. And so enabling people to take action specifically inside of the platform helps you to get a lot more engagement and a lot more distribution organically. And it helps to cut down on the cost of ads as well. So become a student of the platforms, use it yourself. And if you're, for example, on Facebook a lot and you know how Facebook works and you feel comfortable with it because you're using it a lot, if you create ads on it, you're probably gonna be more successful than if you never use Instagram or you know, think about how people are using the product, how your friends and your, how your family are using the product and then try to duplicate that use in general. I think the last bit of advice that I have for you too is if you're trying to create ads, try to make it as simple as possible. Have one specific landing page where you're sending the traffic to that speaks to the ad that you're writing and then make it so that everything is consistent throughout. If possible, create native ads that allow people to opt in natively. When I was doing real estate, one of the biggest things that I would do when I was creating ads would be that I would want people just to comment on the post or the ad that I was doing. If I said, hey, this is an open house that we're having next weekend. If you're interested, comment below, we'll send you the details. That requires a lot less work on behalf of the customer, right? They don't have to do that much. They just comment and say interested. And even giving them the word to comment below helps them to really take action and not wonder what they have to do. And then from there, you can slide into their messages, message them directly, and then begin a conversation. A lot of marketing now, it revolves around conversation and developing that conversation with potential clients and potential customers is extremely valuable. If you can get in front of people who want your product and service and then begin a conversation with them so that you can close them personally, you're going to have a lot of success. Now that might not be scalable for everybody, but for local businesses, if you're looking to increase your clients and customers, you can do that with conversation specifically. So a lot of the platforms like Facebook and Instagram have that messaging ability and you can really go far by, by closing them. The only thing that you have to do is make sure that you have, um, you're able to respond quickly. And the faster that you can respond, the more that you're gonna close. Let's talk really quick though about budget before we wrap up here. Now, most small businesses are on a budget. And that being said, you wanna get the most bang for your buck, the most return on investment. So number one, you need to have a simple funnel that you can track results from, right? So you need to understand where your leads are coming from, how you're getting them, and what the actual cost per result is. That's very, very important. The next thing is that if you have a small budget, targeting very specific transactional phrases where somebody's looking for a specific product or a specific service, or they're in a specific state of mind that you're going to solve a problem for, it's going to help you to convert more and you don't necessarily want to be everywhere, right? If you don't have a huge budget, going on Facebook if you're an emergency plumber might not be a good play because you're gonna have to do branding for a long time before people start calling you. Instead, you should be searching, uh, targeting specific search terms that are happening in the middle of the night, right? So think about where is the, the easiest conversions, where's the low hanging fruit that you're going to be able to capitalize on and really target that first and then from there expand. I do think that when you're starting out with ads, if you start out with a small budget and scale it up, you're gonna be a lot more successful than if you try to blow all of your money on a test and see if it works and you hope for the best, right? If, if your ads are not working at a low budget, they're probably not gonna work at a high budget as well. Now I will put a caveat in there. You have to have enough budget so that your ads will show up. Specifically with Google marketing and Google ads, if you have like a dollar per day budget, your ads probably won't run because it's gonna be lower than the average cost per click. So they just won't be running. And that's frustrating. So you wanna make sure you have enough budget. Typically, if you're starting out, I would like to have a daily budget of 10 to 20 times per cost per click um, as a daily budget for testing. But 
If that's not in the budget, then go with as much as you can for the test. I like to typically put in a beginning test budget, a confirmation budget, and then a scale budget behind that. So once everything has been tested, we confirm that test and then we increase the number of, of dollars that we're spending on ads so that we can increase our scale. I'm sorry, increase our profits and scale that. So if you have any questions, be sure to comment below. I would love to know what are some of your favorite ways to advertise. Are you trying to grow your business? Um, do you have a specific service or question around the service that you're marketing? If you need any help with anything, you know, comment below. You can send me a, an email, brandon at maverickdigitalmarketing.com. You can also subscribe here and uh, I'm happy to help. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, everybody.